me that horse. He couldn't go on. Nor could you. You're injured, man. Let us take you in the house. I gotta go on. Gotta get the telegraph station. We'll take you. Penelope! <laughs> Close down for the night. I know, but this is urgent. Won't you no, please? No, come out of there, you. Can't go against my schedule. Close down. But can't you make this one exception? No. Nope. Get in here. What? Bring a light with you. You can't do this to me. I won't stand for it. The Union Pacific won't stand for it. Night prowling around here like this. You got your ball busted in my office. Who do you think you are, anyway? My key's closed down for the night. Well, you can write it, but I won't send it anyway. Here, let me. Territorial Recorder's Office, Fort Lansing. Have filed corner stakes on plots 234, 235, chart 1089. Record in my name. That's all. How shall I sign it? Court Evans. Oh. over the tombstone. The two of them shot it out of the whole Clanton bunch. So that's Kurt Evans. Hmm. He's quite a man of the gals. They say he's closed the eyes of many a man and opened the eyes of many a woman. Would you call my father, please? Yes, ma'am. Where are we taking him? To the wagon. Take him home. Court Evans? You're crazy. I'd soon have a black powder bomb in my house. Heavy, ain't he? I know a dozen men ride night and day. Catch Court Evans helpless like this. Get him in there. I've heard about you people. How you don't believe in guns or anything like that, only doing good. But you'll take my advice. You'll stay plenty far away from Mr. Court Evans. Thank you very much for your advice. Good night. Good night. So long, Court. That Court Evans is sure of something. Court Evans? You know him? Do I know Court Evans? Do I know Court Evans? Hmm. What a question. If that doesn't quiet him, I don't know don't. what will. Oh. I'll never get that bullet out oh. with him kicking around like that. 
I'm afraid to give him any more sedative. He's already had enough. Please be quiet. The doctor's... Oh, he can't hear you. What do you suppose that delirious mind is searching for? He must be in great pain. Not with that much laudanum in him. It's as if he were reaching for something. Something specific. I don't understand it. By now, he should be completely inert. I've been thinking. No. Thomas, how is the young man? Delirious. A gun in this house, Thomas? But they put these back in the gun belt. It's empty. So that was it. A gun. It's a pity. It's stupid. These wild ones, I keep picking bullets out of them and setting their bones. Why? It's their destiny to wind up on Boot Hill. No. Oh, I forgot. Never speak evil, huh? Well, get me some more hot water, young lady, and we'll start patching him up for whatever's in store for him. Come on, help me with this boat. Mother? Mm hmm? Tell me again. What, dear? Oh, about meeting father. Oh, they've heard that a thousand times. He was working on the roof of the new meeting house. He fell off, and I picked him out of the dust and held him in my arms. He always said I hugged him before I ever even knew his name. And they both knew right away? <laughs> of course. Of course, I knew he was a peaceful man, a member of the society. An evil man would seek a more profitable way of life than being a member of the Friends. Father had a beard then, didn't he? Yes. I should think that would scratch. I prefer a man clean shaven. He's got the constitution of a mountain lion. He'll pull through, barring blood poisoning. These wild ones never seem to get blood poisoning, though it's common enough among the godly. You so-called atheists. You always feel so compelled to stretch your godlessness. Wash him. The bullet's out. He's in no danger. I bet he killed a lot of people. No, he didn't. How does he know? That's enough, John. A friend doesn't speak of such things. Mrs. Worth, get that man out of here. But he's badly injured, Doctor. This isn't civilized Pennsylvania. This is a raw frontier. You must take a realistic attitude. This is a place where mayhem, theft, and murder are the commonplace instead of the unusual. Would that justify leaving a wounded man to die? Build your house by the side of the road and be a friend to man. Ye who believe. I don't mind your mocking. You've been a good friend to us. I'm glad I have a logical mind. And a good heart. Good night, Doctor. Still having delirious spells. Keeps mumbling about his past. Get him. I'm afraid he's had a very violent life. Guards. Copper of my bed on the black ace. You're a shapely hussy. Got real confirmation, Margaret. Huh? You fill out that dress just right. 
that's your color. Alright, Mark. Chart 1089. 1089. Margaret, you're a nuisance. Let's call it off. I got places to go and country to put behind me. Sure, sure, all right. Lila. 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 I own the mint. I put your head on every coin. I used to smoke corn silk when I was a kid. Your hair is just like that, right? Light brown, yellow all mixed up. Just like corn silk, Lila. All gold and torn. Will you bring some hot coffee, Penny? You know, the doctor says he's completely out of danger. Just sleeping. You know, Dr. Penny considers him her own personal patient. Sit down. And will you bring some milk, dear? And when you finish, you can go up and watch him while you card your wool on the loom. He doesn't need watching. He's had no temperature these past few days. Just a superlatively healthy animal, restoring his depleted strength with sleep. He's no longer delirious. But of course, if you're determined to watch over him, Penny, Perhaps you'd better take a pencil and paper with you. His first conscious words should be recorded. They may be of great interest to history. Or more possibly to a United States Marshal. Who knows what violence is involved with his battered frame and his bullet holes? Would you care for a donut, Doctor? They're not as light as they should Listen, be. Listen, Mrs. Worth. You can carry this head in the sand attitude just so far in a world of reality. Let me get this man out of your house. I can dump him in the establishment that passes for a hotel in this oft-times dubious community of ours. In that unsanitary hovel? Then he'll be off your hands. But he's much better off here. Of course he is, but who cares what happens to him? We do. I don't know what to say. Once, when I was studying medicine in Europe, I had a friend, an artist. He drew portraits of people and made them resemble the animals they reminded him of. He'd have drawn this man as a coiled cobra. Oh, doctor, your analogy is terribly imperfect, and your naturalism faulty. Cobras don't coil. Now, oh, but doctor, we're so fond of you, and we respect you so greatly. We're sure that you will finally realize that realism, untempered by sentiment and humanity, is really just a mean, hard, cold outlook on life. A frightened outlook. I stand defeated. And furthermore, there are times in this house when I feel as if I were living in a never-never land. But don't hesitate to call on me anytime you need help. Don't you remember? Father and I drove you into town. Is anything wrong? No. The, the doctor says you'll be all right in a week or two. You were delirious, you know. Two days and two nights. Well, maybe that's why I'm so hungry. I could eat a yearling steer. If I could catch one. Oh, well, we'll get you something. Mother! You 
talked a lot in your delirium. Mother, he's awake. How is he? Hungry. Oh, if he's hungry, he's going to be all right. Thanks a lot for housing me. You're welcome. Smoked sausage and eggs? Sounds great. Two eggs, or would you like three? I'd like six. Oh, you shall have them. Uh, Penny, get one of Father's shirts and, and a razor. I'll get him some food. So I talked a lot. Yes. I listened only because I thought you might say something that would aid us in helping you. As to notifying your wife, for instance? What did I say? If you had a wife. What did I talk about? Well, you talked of Margaret. She, uh, she filled out a red dress. What else? Oh, you mentioned someone named, uh, Lila. Is that all? If you have a wife, we could notify her. No wife. That's 12. Oh, I haven't been so flattered since my donuts won first prize at the fair back in Pennsylvania. You must be smart in Pennsylvania. Uh, some of the members thought it an exhibition of pride to enter my donuts. But what harm can there be in a little donut? Unless one eats so many of them that they explode, which is likely to happen to you, young man. Well, there's worse ways of checking out. I'll help you with the dish. No. You stay and watch Quirt Evans. I'm curious to know the effect of six eggs, a pound of sausage, and 12 donuts. I'll call Lee in time for the milking. Do all you people from Pennsylvania talk like that? Like what? The? Oh, well, we're friends. Friends of who? Of all. The Society of Friends. Many people call us Quakers. Oh, it's a religion. It's a belief. That on the wall. Each human being has an integrity that can be heard only by the act of that same human being and not by the act of another human being. Is that Quaker stuff? Mm -hmm. You mean nobody can hurt you but yourself? That's a friend's belief. Well, supposing somebody whacks you over the head with a branding iron, won't that hurt? Physically, of course. But in reality, it would injure only the person doing the act of force or violence. Only the doer can be hurt by a mean or evil act. Are there very many of you Quakers? Very few. Sort of figured that. Morning, gentlemen. Morning. Carrot from a garden. I found these out in the road. They belong to a fellow named Quirt Evans. I understand you're a friend of his. I thought maybe you'd see that he gets them back. Leave him here. I'll see if he gets them. That Quirt. He'd lose his shirt if it wasn't buttoned on. Careless about everything. I keep telling him, sooner or later he... On second thought, you can just tell me where he is, and I'll take him on back to him myself. Where is Quirt Evans? You mean, where is he? <laughs> Ever notice how a fellow keep repeating the question when he's stalling about answering? Yeah. Maybe if I bend this gun over his head, he'll quit stalling. Well, gentlemen, I hardly know Quirt Evans. Uh-oh. He lies, too. You've been bragging all over town what good friends you two are. You know, this fellow ain't got many good qualities, has he? Sit down, friend. Maybe that'll help your memory. I'm asking about Quirt Evans. Well, all I know is... Oh. Thanks for sewing the shirt. But I can't find my pants. Get back in bed. Oh, laziness is the only thing that's kept me there this long. The doctor says you're to stay in bed four more days. How oh, oddy, Quirt. Oh, you're up. That's no way to speak to an older person, gentlemen. Well, we're pals. You wouldn't expect a pal to call me mister, would you? 
See, Dr. Mangrove says to tell you some men in town were looking for you. Says one of the men was a Mr. Laredo Stevens. Get my pants. But your leg. Johnny, get me my pants. No, John. Will he get my pants? Get the pants, John. What you said. What are you looking at? V. Oh, boy, it's a good thing I'm not a tattletale. I said him or. They use the familiar in speaking to me. The what? The familiar. The plain language. <laughs> Get thee my pants, he said. Well, what about it? Well, among us, thee and thou are used only the loved ones. To all others, we use you and, and he and they. Mother to children, husband to wife, and children to... Between lovers, of course. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm not. What? I'm not. I wish thee to speak so to me. Take you a lot of places. I'd go. What? I'd rather stay here with thee, but if you'd rather go someplace else, then I'll go someplace else. <laughs> you sound very bold. Well, it's just that uh, I didn't think religious people were quite so uh, sudden and direct. Well, it's the way I feel, and it'd be dishonest to say anything else. Yeah. I used to wonder about it. I suppose every girl does. About what? Oh, about love. About whether as you got to know someone, you fell in love little by little, or it happened all at once. They are shocked. Well, uh, I wouldn't say uh, shocked exactly, but uh, you sure get to the point. Should I be different? No, Penny, I like you just the way you are. Who emptied this gun? Father. Cord, a, a gun is a symbol of force, of evil. We never have one in our homes. It was a concession that Father allowed even an empty one. It was only because you couldn't rest without... Where are the cartridges? Outside. <laughs> Because busting through doors with Court Evans on the other side ain't my idea of a healthy pastime. Tell him to come in. Come in. You can stand right there. Against the light. Howdy, Court. You sure run a ring around me, all right. But you know, I don't think it was right friendly of you to beat me to locating that tract after my boys found it. Of course, I'm willing to listen to your side of it. I'm a reasonable man. Sure. Laredo's always reasonable. That's why he's the biggest man in the territory. You the biggest man in the territory, Laredo? So a lot of people say. I hadn't heard. You nervous? No, Evans. I can't figure out why you keep stepping on my toes all the time. Of course, that's your business. I'm a good loser. Well, I like a good loser. Of course, I like any kind of a loser better than a winner. Yeah. You know, I had a chance to do a heap of thinking while I was following your trail across the territory. I followed it by that string of run-out horses you left behind. And well, sir, I figure it out this way. Quirt don't really want that land, because work ain't exactly in his line. Is it in your line? No, of course not. I was getting it for another fella. And, well, I figure maybe you'll sell. I don't hear anything jingle. 
Is it all right if I put my hand inside my shirt? Why not? Five thousand in gold, eh? I want twenty. Well, okay, but uh, I'll have to owe you fifteen. That's all I got on me. I got the deed in my pocket here. Get it out. Now, uh, if the young lady could find us something to sign this with. Still Laredo's hired boy, eh, Hondo? Picking up after him, carrying matches for his cigars. You mind yourself. He'll mind himself, won't you, Hondo? Miss, would you mind taking this over to Mr. Evans, please? I'm sure glad to see you up and around, Quirt. We heard you was flat on your back. Sorry to disappoint you. And you come on over and get the rest of that money anytime. Anytime, that is, that you feel able. I'll see you one of these days. Well, uh, so long, Quirt. Settle up my horse, will you, kid? And throw on my war bags. What would have happened if they knew the gun was empty? It would have been Saturday night in Sioux City. Tie on my slicker, too. Sorry. Oh, no, Court, no. What kind of a border do you think I am? You can't do that. We tend to any wounded human, and not for pay. You don't believe in force, so you can't force me to take it back. I'm afraid you're outwitted, Thomas. How long have I been here? Almost three weeks. Kinda hate to get going. Oh, but you can't. Your leg, you're in no condition to travel. Don't worry, your cooking's got me grained up and ready for market. Adios, amigos. Shall I pack my things? Why? They'd leave without me. I got places to go. Kurt, I wouldn't care. It doesn't make any difference to me how far. Oh. I know so little. I... I didn't know it could happen to one and not the other. I thought it always happened to both. That isn't the end. It isn't? Well, uh... Then they do feel that... Look, Penny, uh... I'm not the kind of a guy that does things suddenly. I, uh, gotta look before I leave. You can ask anybody, they'll tell you that Court Evans is a mighty cautious citizen. Oh, then it, it's just that they're not sure yet. Yeah. Sorry. Oh, please stay. He's all settled, Court. Unsadly. Can I stay? A double eagle. Quint, there's something I'd rather have than this. A favor, a big favor. Well, you got them both. What is it? Would you ride past the schoolhouse with me? There's a lot of boys who don't believe I know Quint Evans. Well, sure. Oh, golly. Everybody says you're the fastest man in the territory. Well, there's those who'd... Say I'm pretty slow. Bench 
be able to do a good day's work after breakfast like that. I'll see that you do it. Penny, where's the bucket? Oh, I declare, Penny, I don't know what's happening to me. Funny thing about pancakes, I lose my appetite for them after the first couple of dozen. Oh, they weren't very good this morning, too heavy. <laughs> Wild Indian. Put water on those vegetables this morning. There's always work around here to be done. <laughs> he wanted to be a farmer, didn't he? Not anymore, I don't. Surely you can walk to the barn without that. What? The gun. Oh, well, it uh, balances me. One leg's longer than the other. You know, the weight. <sighs> Lee are a liar. Throw the cow some hay. There's a pitchfork. Before I was 15, I learned to hate those things. I swore I'd leave plows and pitchforks to farmers. I'll do it. No, I'll do it. But it's an occasion. The. What? Nothing, just, uh, just the. Penny! Well, you wanted hay, didn't you? Didn't they? Fifteen? Better put this littlest one in the box. Now get a bucket of water. Water, water. All I do is carry water. Uh-uh. No force. Say, wasn't this place irrigated? See all these plumes and ditches. Frederick Carson turned the water off. Frederick Carson. He's the man who bought the ranch up above from friends who couldn't make a go of it. We had built a community dam, but it was on his property. Well, what'd you do about it? Don't tell me. You're afraid. Of course. Get you any water? Well, we didn't pray for water. We prayed for Frederick Carson. Carson turned off the water and you prayed for him? Of course. Can't you see? By committing an evil act, the poor man injured his soul. I'm glad there's a well. Because it'd sure get thirsty around here if we had to wait for Carson. Gonna walk this pony. Sure, you don't leave no slack in that cinch. The boss will sure how. Yeah, this ain't the first pony I ever saddled. He'd squawk no matter how I done it. He's sure getting mean these days, ain't he? Cantankerous by his natural borning. That boil in his neck don't help him none either. Get out of my way. You belong behind a plow. Carson. Don't get down. We ain't taking on no saddle traps on this spread. Vamoot. Are you deep? I said get moving, tramp. Nice dam. Yeah, what's that to you? Take out the top two planks. 
What did you say? The top two. Let 16 inches of water over there. Who says so? I do. And who might you be when you're at home? Quirt Evans. Well, anybody might ride up here and say they're Quirt Evans. He ain't known around here by sight. Anybody can say they're him. Sure could. But there's a QE stamp on his saddle. Well, take the top planks out of that head gate, you stupid idiot. Well, I don't need all that extra water. Step up on that pony. Well, well now, look here, Mr. Evans. I've done what you told me to. You sure did. Step up on that pony. Well, I'm a kind of a fellow tries to get along with everybody. Side me. Well, wait a minute. Maybe we better take out a couple more of them plank chucks. I've got ten times as much water as I need. That'll do for now. Well, if you ever need any more, Mr. Evans, all you got to do is say so. I figured that. Straightened everything out. So you think your gun changed, Frederick Carson, huh? Who says I pointed a gun? I do. Well, I didn't. And he gave in more easily than I expected. They remember this court. The Lord moves in mysterious manner at times using strange methods and odd instruments. Me? Mm -hmm. Well, that would be odd. Get a gnawn hankering after good pies and truck like that. Oh, Freddie Carson. Yes, sir. Oh, I want you to have some of these. They're awful good with coffee in the morning. Makes me want to go home and shoot my Chinese cook. <laughs> you just come back for more any time you like. There are always plenty. Thank Goodbye. you. Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye, Frederick. Goodbye. Man ought to see more of his neighbors. Hey, wonderful woman that Mrs. Worth. Look, she fixed my boil. Penny! Excuse me, I think Father wants to give thanks. Oh, he already thanked me. I know, I think now he'd like to thank someone else. Hey, hold my plunder while I get aboard, will you? Uh, 
You know, Mrs. Worth's going to keep me supplied in pies. I want to bring her over a quarter of beef now and then. Finally come to an understanding with my neighbors. You sure did. Oh, well, of course, you know I was just scared to death when I made that speech to them people. I'm glad you made me do it. Makes me feel good. Adios, amigo. dinner gonna be? Oh, roast venison and vegetables and, of course, a skimpy chicken. Well, with a pie and cake, I'll try to make out. Chicken or venison? Both. I feel real good. Oh, you do, huh? Mmm, new dress. Oh, it, it's first day. You call it Sunday. Quirt, uh, do me a favor and hitch up the team for Father. Sure. And will you do me another favor? Go for a ride with us. Where? You're not to ask. It's a, it's a surprise. It's a pleasant one. Hey, Quirt, we got a surprise for you. He knows. I told him. I thought you weren't allowed to work on Sunday. Oh, Court, there's nothing we're not allowed to do. It, it's just that we don't believe in doing what we know is wrong. Well, that makes it pretty much each fellow's own guess. But each fellow knows inside. Well, there's a lot of gents I wouldn't want to give that much leeway to. around here. Well, yes, I'll get him. Never mind. I can do my talking to you. Uh, has it been here long? About three weeks, I guess. He didn't, uh, he didn't disappear for, say, two days during that time, did he? No. Hello, you weather-beaten old hangman. Penny, this is Wispo McClinic, the Marshal of the Territory. Hi, miss. And don't let that gray hair fool you. He's a curly wolf. Hello, Quirt. See, I thought I had you about half hung. Tall fella, fast with a gun, held up to bake a stage, killed a couple. Now, you're right tall, and some say you're a fast man. But I guess I'll have to take the little lady's word for it. When are you and Laredo Stevens going to get around to killing one another? Laredo? Well, we water our horses out of the same trough. Well, I'm sure looking forward to hanging the survivor. You know, I'm a figuring man. Sometimes I don't know all the answers. Like that fella, Quirt Evans. Handy man with a coat. While he was acting as Wyatt Earp's deputy over the tombstone, one day he turns in his badge and starts building himself a nice cattle spread. Suddenly sells out and goes on to prod. Why? That's when I ain't figured yet. Sometimes things connect. About that time, a fella called Walt Ennis went down in front of Laredo Stevens. Walt was reached at the time, and some say that a gambler standing there grabbed his hand. Maybe that's connected. How did you stand with Walt Ennis? Know him. Two things connected? I know a lot of people. Well, I'll figure it out. I usually do. I'm patient. Young lady, don't be looking at him with your eyes all bugged out like a cowboy's. There ain't no future in it. So long, folks. 
Bert, please stay away from Laredo Stevens. He owes me money. And don't worry, I might come out on top. That'd be even worse. Worse? And it'd be worse if he goes down than if I go down? Of course, don't you see that? Oh, I know, I'd be a guy with a marred soul. Don't make it sound so crude, Quirt. You see why? I couldn't love you. All right. I won't look up Loretta. It's better this way. Every time he opens a door, every time he hears footsteps coming around a corner, Loretta will start sweating, thinking it's me. His food won't set well the rest of his life. Well, all right, but if I'm gonna be holy, I gotta get some fun out of it. Hardly a whole week since last first day. to go. Well, we have. Would you care to come along with us? Well, sure. Where? To meeting. To, to meeting? meeting? Yes, to meeting. You don't want to go, do you? It'd be nice if you could. We'd be happy to have any friend of Quirt's. You would? Well, that's just fine. You know, ma'am, I sure am an old friend of Quirt's. Well, I remember one time we were chasing cattle down near the Lano River. Heard stampeded, and Quirt pulled me right out from underneath him. Then there was another time, remember? In Opal's Palace down in San Antonio. We're late. I know, but I was Goodbye. only Goodbye. If you can join us, it's in the Grove, just the other side of town. Thank you, ma'am. Good day. Get along. Good day. Why askest thou me concerning that which is good? One there is who is good. But if thou wouldst enter into life, Keep the commandments. He saith unto him, Which? And God said, Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Honor thy father and thy mother, and thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. What comes out of this thing that makes it worth all this work? Frozen pudding. Hello, Nelson. Hello, Penny. Nelson Craig Court Evans. How do you do? How do you? Nelson's our horseshoer. Oh. By the way, I, I brought that maple sugar you like so much. Oh, well, Oh, excuse I... me. I'll put it here. Well, thank you. Oh, say, isn't this the Morgan baby? Yes, I'm minding him. He's cute, a cute little fella. <laughs> Looks just like his father. Oh, uh, I'm coming out next week to shoe the horses, Penny. Oh, fine. Well, I'll get some water. Here, let me help you. Here, twirl this thing. Frozen pudding. Quirt, I want some of those flowers. You sick or something? I don't believe it. It's a baby. Yeah, I know. Is it old enough to talk? Of course not. Mm. Well, if it can't talk, it can't snitch. Look. 
I got something I think you'd like to hear. Laredo Stevens is planning a big play. He's gonna jump up some guys that are moving a trail herd up from the north. And I figured that maybe you and me and a couple of friends could sort of play copycat. Well, you heard me, didn't you? You can have my part of it. What am I listening to? Are you passing up a chance to blister Laredo? That's right. What's the matter with you, Quirt? This farm what? Oh, the dame. Sticking your head in this bucket will shut you up. You're getting awful touchy lately. You never used to mind what I said. Hello. Hi. Come along with the water, Quirt. <laughs> shut up. <laughs> Quirt, would you come over here? Sit down. May I have your attention? Friends, we all know the purpose of this meeting is threefold. As always, to give thanks for the goodness bestowed upon us but also to give thanks for the particular that the fields are again watered and the crops and the livestock thrive. There's two mushroom routes right at the head of the valley. If you stick a look out there, you can see a herd coming for 10 miles. Yeah. Quirt Evans. Friends. Happy to present you with this token of our friendship for you. This is Quirt Evans. We're happy to have him here with us because he provided another incident which reaffirms our belief that all men are good if they are shown the light. He persuaded Frederick Carson to let down the water by showing him that a man who is a friend to other men is a happy man himself. I shake your hand, Cordae. I want to talk to you. not like I'm butting into your business, and I am. And you ought to give me a watch with a gold case for doing it. You dim-witted nail-bender, marry that girl. Marry her? Why, I assure you my intention... Well, she knows how I feel. How would she know? Stop yammering about chewing horses. That's no way to talk to a girl. Talk to her about her, and marry her, and do it quick. Hey! Come on! Listen to this. And Benaniah, the son of Jehodiah, the son of a valiant man of Kabzil, who had done many acts of valor, slew two men of Moab and went down and slew three lions in the midst of a pit in the time of snow. Whew! Three lions! And Benaniah slew an Egyptian who had a sword. He took away his sword and slew him with a staff. I guess that must mean a club. Oh, brother, this is good writing. Let's go. What about the Bible? You can't throw it away. That would be bad luck. Then keep it. All right. This is one book I'm sure going to read. I'd better take him back to the Morgans. Up today. That's a big boy. Why did Quirt leave so abruptly? I don't know. Hey, boss! Yeah? Right on time. Look behind you.
let's saddle up, men. I hear him. Yeah. Let's get this stuff. I don't know how I missed this book. You know, you're not very pretty, but I like you just the same on account of your head works. It's much nicer this way. You make it interesting. You know, anybody could just shoot these guys, but you think of an interesting way of doing it. And you know, quit. I hate to shoot people. I remember I shot a Waddy once in Montana, and I dreamed about it all the next night. And of course, there's always witnesses, and you gotta shoot the witnesses. Stop jabbering and let's go. Okay, take it easy, pal. Sit your tongue, you know, I don't wanna lose my war bags. And again, I figure if, uh, you'd change your mind about shooting if Loretta was with these guys. Step up on that horse. Okay, you got it. Or maybe you're just crowding Loretta into drawing on you in front of a lot of people. Kinda saving them for a big night in town, huh? like Port Evans. Yeah. That's just who it is. Next time we're face to face. Yeah, I know.
you can light out in those new boots and see if you can run them down. fancier than whiskey, but it sure don't give quick action. To tell you the truth, I don't really like it, but it's very fashionable. How do you like it, Lila? Tickle's going down, and it's expensive, so <laughs> I like it. You sleepy tall man? Nope. Tired? No. Worried? Or maybe just plain bored? Not a chance, baby. You're never bored. I wish I had that in writing. You know, it's been a long time since you told me that my hair reminded you of corn silk. Less romantic and a lot more absent-minded. Take a turn at the wheel. Win yourself a farm in Kansas. I don't want a farm in Kansas. Well, all right, I'll win you a trip around the world. Miss Neal, the customers are waiting, and that's no way to treat customers. glass. Hey, there's plenty of room on either side. Do you have to come bullying in here between us? I didn't see you. You interrupted a very important discussion on serious matters regarding big things. Me and my brothers don't like it. Gentlemen, gentlemen, no trouble, please. We just put the place back together after the last difference of opinion. Gentlemen, what were the breakage in the overhead? Mainly the breakage. I've had a dreadful time keeping body and soul together. If what I think is gonna happen, happens, it'll round out a full day. Here's your trip. What's eating you, tall man? Did you have words with those Baker brothers? Who? Those four rhinos. No. 
told around they're quarrelsome citizens. Gentlemen, let's consider the incident closed. Watch our tempers. Maybe I ought to go apologize. More whiskey. Come, gentlemen, let's act like this. I'll be right back. I hope. Oh, Randy's always on time. Oh, Gentlemen, you don't know what you're doing to me. Please, I got a large family. Hey, wait a minute, it's me. You go ahead. That's my old friend, Billy. Come on, Mulley. Come on, Mulley. Get in. Come on, get in. Get in. Get in. Get in. Get in. Get in. Come on, Mulley. Get in. Get in. Get in. Go on, keep after him. You got him. Now you got him. That's a, that's a fine, Mulley. Thanks. I must have hit the wrong man. I'll say you did, you... Sorry, Court. How you doing? Don't worry about me. Come on. You wait outside and kick them and count them as we throw them out. What? Don't count. Has he forgotten something? No. Penny, what is wrong with thee of late? Tablecloths don't belong in there. Oh, I'm sorry. Settle my horse, will you, kid? Sure. Want to board her for a while? Of course. You're always welcome. Quirk. Hello. Well, I haven't had a decent meal since I left here. Chocolate? Not very good. The flour, you know. Well, I'll just stick around till you get one right. I'll feed the chickens. So early, Penny? Yes. Help me, Quirk.
Does it take two to feed a few chickens, Mother? At times, Thomas, at times. Remember? You came back? Yes. Why? I don't know exactly. Why did you go away without saying anything? I don't know that exactly either. I think it was because I frightened you. Oh, I know that sounds strange that I should frighten you, but I mean it. You were frightened because I was stupid. And you thought that living with me would be tiresome and dull after a while. Tiresome and dull because all, all I knew, raised since a baby here on the farm, was our belief that people love, marry, and stay together forever after that. Oh, I'm not such a fool not to know that outside worldly places, people love it. It doesn't have to follow that they marry and stay together forever. I know that sometimes they separate. Are you ever going to run down and let me talk? No, Court, that's what you were afraid of, that I'd tie myself around your neck, and when you got tired, you couldn't be rid of me. And I made up my mind, if you came back, I'd tell you this. That whatever you want, Court, you can be. If I go away, you go with me. If I go away, they go with me. I used to be an engine fighter. Just can't help walking up soft on people. Morning, Missy. This young man been doing any traveling since I was here last? All over Castle Verde lost a big herd a few days ago. Where, Missy? Cat got your tongue? Why ask her? You know I've been traveling. You look in the corral to see how my horse shaped up. I did just that. And he sure covered a lot of country. He's a right weary animal. I just wanted to see with the young lady live for you. I was going to. You've been over Castle Verde way? I've been to Rim Rock, and I got witnesses to prove it. Witnesses? For instance? Randy McCall, Christine Taylor. That's what I call witnesses. Who else? Lyle and Neil, I suppose. She'd make a good alibi witness for you. Randy, Christine, and Lila. There's three to draw to. So Lila saw you there too, huh? Yes. Come here, Jughead. You dollar and a half brush jumper. Ooh. Well, there's a mystery again, Quirt. But I'm patient. That's what hangs all you fellas in the end. I'm patient. Lila. You talked about her when you were delirious.
my hair were... Hers was like corn silk, you said. I never thought I'd see. Kurt Evans behind the plow. The pony walks as soft as you do. I taught him. Oh, I figured you'd have hurt him. Except you were thinking too hard. Haven't you got some real important business to attend to? Someplace else? Sure. But I always like to keep track of your whereabouts. No, Quirt. I always figured on using a new rope and hanging you. Because I kind of respected you. You never took the best of things. And all your men went down looking at you. You don't mind your own business. I usually do. It's a shame things don't always turn out the way they should. Now, that little gal should marry some young fella who'd know what to do with that plow. Why don't you kick up that horse and move on? Some young fella that raised a lot of grain. And cows, sheep, and kids. The kind of a fella that she'd always know where he was. Do I have to run you off? Well, now, I'll tell you. I never have been run off no place yet where I aim to stay. But it just so happens I gotta be going. No, Quirt. You don't rate a new rope with me. Nonsense have to go with it. I'm not gonna stand for a lot of dressing up and a batch of jabbering people looking at me just because I'm getting married. Court, come along with me. Well, yes or no? Come along. Picking blackberries? Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. like blackberries. No, I know I was right. There's too much work connected with it. <laughs> I'll get some more fur. Look out, there's a wasp on that Don't petunia. Don't kill it. Well, it's all right for you to trust wasps and people, but he might have known I don't trust him and decided to take first bite. Mm -hmm. And incidentally, that's not a petunia, that's a daisy. That's a petunia. Petunia, daisy, daisy, petunia. Court Evans. Hmm? Oh, nothing. I just like the sound of it. Court. Where'd they ever get such an odd name? The fellow who half raised me gave it to me. He found me somewhere along the big cattle trail. Folks had been bushwhacked by Indians, I guess. He was a big fella, 
cattle man. Swung a wide loop in his younger days, I think. Wide loop? Well, wasn't too careful whose calf he threw his rope at. Uh -huh. Most of the old cattlemen were like that. He raised me. He was quite a guy. His name was Walt Ennis. He was downed in a gambling place. Well, I grabbed his gun arm just as he drew. It was murder. Stop it. <laughs> then what? Well, I just bounced around from place to place. Court Adams. alone. You don't have to be worried about Penny, Mother. Oh, I can't help worrying about it, Johnny. Get that doctor and burn up the road both ways.
It's amazing. The varied uses to which men put alcohol. To each different individual, it's either a stimulant, a depressant, or an anodyne. Just now, I'm using it as an anodyne. Get to the point. The practice of medicine is one of the most infuriating professions known to man. It takes 30 years of experience to teach you that in the final analysis, there's nothing to do but stand and watch. If she has a lucid moment, you'd better speak to her. I'm not trying to argue you out of anything, but maybe you ought to stop and think. She wouldn't like this, Quirt. I'm not arguing for or against her point of view, but I know that to her, the world's worst tragedy would be that you should kill a man. Of course, you could argue logically that she wouldn't know whether you'd killed him or not. I think she'd know. Any discussion has to have at least two participants. Of course, if you refuse to answer me, I... Quirt! If I felt cynical, this would be a good opportunity to observe that we're about to see a perfect example of an eye for an eye, etc. Unfortunately, I can't quote chapter and verse. And I'm too tired to be cynical. You're very ill. They must not be moving about. Mother, I've got to go to him. They must get back into bed. But he needs me. Don't This is me. insanity. I told you to keep her in bed. Do you want to commit suicide? You don't stay under those covers, young lady. There's no fever. Well, they must do what the doctor says. Mother, please. I can't understand it. I can't understand it at all. There must be some logical, scientific explanation. I'm too old to start believing in miracles. Wrapper in blankets. Jeffrey's pistol with me. Wait till Kurt Evans hears about this. Him and me will take the starch out of the whole caboodle of them. Why, Kurt and me once, well, it was in Dodge City several years back, when the Earths and Clintons were gunning it. Well, me and Kurt... Come here. Yes, Mr. Evans. Stevens? He's in the Eagle. And that pistol whipping Hondo's with him. Take him a message. Hey. Buy the boys a drink. You celebrating? Sure. Why not? Don't you ever get excited when you make a big win like this? Why get excited? Sometimes you win and sometimes you lose. Don't get excited, gentlemen. I ain't looking for trouble. I'm just to carry in a message. Yeah? What is it? He said to come out in the street. He's waiting for you. Who says? Kurt Evans. What is this, a joke? Kurt Evans is... Take a look out in the street and see if it really is him. 
Jack, take a look in the street. There's a tall hombre in a black hat standing at the blacksmith shop. Mind if I use the back door, Pete? So long, Pete. That cat's got nine lives. Maybe old Quirt's part cat. He also said he was curious to know how much whiskey it would take to build up your nerve to come out. You fixing to get your ears pinned back? There's a better pair of ears out in the street if you want to pin somebody's ears back. Yeah, you drink this. Sure. I don't have to stand near you. Come on. I wonder if that sharpshooting marshal's around town. Oh, I saw him right out of town an hour ago. That's good. Wouldn't want him around here to spoil our play. Yeah. I bet that's just exactly how you meant that. Why don't you turn around, Court? Nothing ever works out right. I had them dead to rights. They got the Baker stage. So I figured I'd watch the ruckus. You down them, and I'd hang you. Sort of 
killing three hawks with one stone, so to speak. And nothing, nothing ever works out right. Well, I missed you getting for it, but I'm patient. It's only a matter of time and I hang you. Not me, mister. From now on, I'm a farmer. That quirk. Quirk might need that. No. Only a man that carries a gun ever needs one. What are you gonna do with it? Hang it on the wall in my office with a new rope. <laughs> 